อุดมศึกษาชั้นนำด้านวิทยาศาสตร์และเทคโนโลยีของประเทศหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาตรีสามหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์และเทคโนโลยีการอาหารสาขาวิชาเทคโนโลยีการบักและอุตสาหกรรมอาหารสาขาวิชาวิศวกรรมแปรรูปอาหารหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาโทสามหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์การอาหารสาขาวิชาเทคโนโลยีการบริการอาหารและการจัดการสาขาวิชาการจัดการความปลอดภัยอาหารหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาเอกหนึ่งหลักสูตรสาขาวิชาวิทยาศาสตร์การอาหารหลักสูตรธรรมชาติคณะของเราเน้นการพัฒนาผลิตภัณฑ์อาหารนวัตกรรมและโครงงานวิจัยเพื่อนำไปสู่การสร้างเทคโนโลยีทางอาหารที่สามารถแก้ไขปัญหาได้จริงเราจะเป็นสถาบันแนวหน้าที่ผลิตบุคลากรและสร้างนวัตกรรมเพื่อพัฒนาอุตสาหกรรมอาหารให้เป็นที่ยอมรับในระดับสากลคณะอุตสาหกรรมอาหารมีการเรียนการสอนเกี่ยวกับอาหารนักศึกษาจะได้เรียนรู้ฝึกคิดวิเคราะห์และปฏิบัติจริงในห้องเรียนห้องปฏิบัติการมีการฝึกงานและสหกิจศึกษาที่สถานประกอบการและมีการศึกษาโจทย์วิจัยที่เกี่ยวข้องกับอาหารที่ทันสมัยคณะมีหลักสูตรระดับปริญญาตรีที่มีการเรียนการสอนครอบคลุมทุกด้านของอุตสาหกรรมอาหารทั้งหมด4หลักสูตรได้แก่ 1. หลักสูตรวิทยาศาสตร์และเทคโนโลยีการอาหาร 2. หลักสูตรเทคโนโลยีการหมักในอุตสาหกรรมอาหาร 3. หลักสูตรวิศวกรรมแปรรูปอาหาร 4. หลักสูตรวิทยาศาสตร์การประกอบอาหารและการจัดการการบริการอาหารหลักสูตรนานาชาติสิ่งอำนวยความสะดวกในคณะมีอุปกรณ์ที่พร้อมต่อการเรียนการสอนมีอุปกรณ์และเครื่องมือการแปลรูปอาหารการวิเคราะห์และตรวจสอบคุณภาพอาหารที่ทันสมัยทั้งในระดับห้องปฏิบัติการและในระดับอุตสาหกรรมมีห้องปฏิบัติการกันครัวที่พร้อมรองรับการเรียนการสอนรวมถึงร้านอาหารต้นแบบให้นักศึกษาได้ฝึกปฏิบัติเพื่อการเรียนรู้ของนักศึกษาช่วยสนับสนุนและส่งเสริมทักษะปฏิบัติของนักศึกษาให้เป็นไปอย่างมีประสิทธิภาพสูงสุดกูส์อัพนูนเอวิวันทุกวันและวิวิวฮิร์อีกแล้วกันที่เวิลด์ฟู้ดซูมินาร์ซีรีส์โซทุกวันวิวิวที่เอเอพิโซดเอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที่เอเอพิโซดที
สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ It's very nice to meet you again. Uh, I think it's Friday and my topic is pretty happy. <laughs> so I hope uh, I give you uh, how do I say valuable information. This is kind of my uh, academic and research history. As uh, uh, these two topics, I've been working with more than 20 years. So uh, let me introduce uh, these two topics. Starting from uh, ISO problem first and then subjectin will come next. Let me <clears throat> share my slide with you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, when you when you say so uh, ISO problem, you start with the soybean all the time. Soybean's uh, scientific name is glycine mixed error. Everybody knows it very well, and many uh, nutrition scientists claim soy protein is as good as milk and egg white. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to show you uh, there's uh, some differences in uh, nutritional uh, content and the types in soybeans de depending upon cultivars. Ho I hope you are very well acquainted with the cultivars and genotypes, the different species, the different ones. Uh, we have uh, this kind of um, uh, many uh, soybeans is cult uh, are cultivated in Korean uh, field. And if you look at it closely, the size and the shape is kind of different. Uh, apart from the physical appearance, <clears throat> actually, uh, the chemical uh, compound inside is also varies. Let me see, uh, I, I tried to check many data, but there is uh, one data from Nigeria. This uh, Dr. Meng Chul Lee uh, from the Korean uh, government organization, uh, he was invited to Nigeria and check with the uh, different genotypes of soybeans. And as you can see here, <clears throat> crude fat oil content starting from 21 to 30 varies 9%. And crude protein, all day up to 41 to 20 uh, 16 percent also it varies so if you pick up the soybean in the market and then you finish your project and then you try to redo it again if you don't know the genotypes you will not uh, reproduce your data <clears throat> let's say i always uh emphasize this beware Selection of raw material is the most important step of your research or product development. We make many mistakes with this thing. I review uh, many uh, papers a month. Mostly they start with a, a wrong selection of raw material and uh, the data is really uh, full of flaws. Well, then you have to talk with the horticulture scientists about this because you don't know what it is. Scientific name, cultivar name, genotype. Where it is cultivated and when it is harvested and how it storage after the post harvest storage we I'm talking about. All these conditions are really important for our uh, next stage. I will show you this. This is a for uh, soybean for soy coat and fermented food. Protein content is 37% around, fat around 20%. But if you need a vegetable, you, you are selecting a different cultivar. The fat content is 10% higher. Uh, protein is pretty much the same, but a little bit higher. Instead, carbohydrate concentrations uh, like let's say 20% lower. This is all different cultivars or genotypes. Uh, related with these things, uh, uh, one industry made a big mistake and uh, run into big trouble. So they 
I don't know why they asked me and they sent uh, some people uh, to ask their trouble. So I made the journey to Ulyanov, Russia. Uh, there's a lab company, it's a very large company like uh, Japanese Meiji or something like that. Uh, they are using <coughs> uh, uh, some soybeans to produce imitate uh, vegetable meat because uh, Russian Orthodox Church during the certain festival, one month almost, no meat is allowed. You don't eat, you cannot eat meat. So they have an urge for meat. So this company tried to develop uh, vegetable meat. Uh, problem is when they worked on these things, uh, their product has a low protein content yield and the fiber is too high. So it tastes never like a, a meat at all. So I flew from Korea to here to Moscow and then from Moscow with a little bit of airplane, a very dangerous airplane, I, I flew to Ulyanovsk, Russia. And when I arrived at Ulyanovsk, there was a, a large plantation is over there around the Volga River. Volga River is the longest river in Europe region. And abundant of water. And I first I visited the soybean plantation. As you can see, they started flowering under the huge areas. And I met with the uh, uh, manager. Uh, there are so many Sergeys in Russia. It's uh, Sergey number one I met. And he explained uh, all these things, how they cultivate and uh, how, they, how they use herbicide with the airplane, all these things. And then I tried to leave that place. And uh, there's a one gentleman. Uh, he is the head of this town and invite me over to their dinner. Uh, as you can see, vodka, I don't drink anymore, but at that time, uh, I enjoyed uh, their food. This is my Russian uh, student, uh, Evgeny. Uh, he translate English, all these things. I speak English, he trans, he talked with Russian and explained it with in English, all these things. Everywhere I make friends. Anyway, uh, so I couldn't find uh, anything better. So I visited Ulyanov uh, University because the uh, agricultural college is very large over there and very active. I talked with uh, President Dojoro and then explained the problem with the uh, uh, soybean uh, cultivar. And he really friendly take me to their uh, pilot farm. A uh, pilot farm is also very large. And then pick up some soybean root and showing me and explain all these things to me. And as you can see here, the, I can see soybean pole, so I can check with the size anyway. And the uh, nodule is a rhizobium. Uh, this is taking nitrogen from air. It's like a natural fertilizer. And uh, since I couldn't get enough information, uh, but uh, from the Dr. Dojoro, I have enough information. And uh, talk with the Alep uh, managing director, uh, talk with the uh, executive members, uh, all these things and the uh, solution to Alep, use another high protein content and large size DC. Change everything. They are really shocked. Okay, next uh, topic is uh, biologically active compound in soybeans. Uh, there's many uh, biologically active compounds, protein, oligosaccharide, dietary fiber, isoproblem, and, and so on. Uh, I'd like to focus on isoproblem here. Uh, isoproblem is estrogen like compound, which means hormone-like compound. It's like a female hormone. This estrogen is uh, actually uh, the structure of estrogen. I, isoproblem is pretty much similar. Uh, 
I work these things with the Maido University, Lama Tibadi Hospital. And uh, this is number one paper. Uh, second uh, work with the uh, if under resistance never understand menopause by by the some Thai uh, translation. I hope it's right. Uh, also work with the uh, soy rich diet on cardiac risk factors and menopausal symptoms in climactic high woman women. And the summaries: everything's improved, but no significant no significant treatment effect were observed. Actually, I, I asked why. A clinical study in Korea showed different results, which showed significant improvement in menopausal symptoms as well as blood cholesterol profiles. So yeah, this is something to do with the uh, uh, intestinal microflora, or uh, what is it? So I checked with the structure of isoflavones. Uh, isoflavon has uh, many different uh, uh, varieties, actually. Uh, we call agriquons. Agricon means without glycoside part. Yeah. Yes, this is glycoside part that bind with these things. Uh, these two types present in the soybean. Only problem is uh, this part, gl uh, glycoside part, cannot be absorbed very easily through the intestinal cell walls. But the aglucon uh, actually uh, permeate very easily. So the uh, under resistance will maybe ask why the two types present in plant. Well, I will explain it later. This is what I explained of this agricon types uh, much better absorbed much better through villi of intestine. What is villi? This is the intestine uh, uh, inside of intestine. Uh, your nutrient absorbed this way. This is real life. And uh, why then glucoside attached there? What purpose? If you want to know this thing, this is uh, a design of nature. Uh, in your stomach, uh, enzyme pepsin, this active enzyme, uh, and the pepsin again present in active enzyme. When you don't need anything at all, most uh, uh, type of uh, these enzymes are inactive, pepsinogen types. Then if you eat something, uh, hydrochloric acid in your stomach so coming out, then it cut down uh, this uh, orange part. So this becomes pepsin and active enzyme. So if you eat meat, uh, it will digest the proteins. Uh, likewise, uh, maybe uh, inside of a plant, there is uh, some reason uh, to isoflavones should be in there with the inactive state. So talking with uh, my client company, I suggested to actually three ways, but uh, mostly two ways approach. First, I approach it, how to make an agricultural type. First, uh, uh, search for plant containing high isoflavone content. Uh, for the production and processing, you need a high concentration of uh, active compound first. Otherwise, uh, you are uh, using so many uh, your materials to get certain amount of uh, active compound. Another thing is uh, if you use lactic acid bacteria, it will break down uh, glycosidic, gl glycosidic bond. So making it into agricon type in the large intestine. Uh, easy thing is outside with the enzyme, hydrolyzed gly glycoside moiety. So where well, it turns into agricon. Uh, if you can see, I Problem profiles of different genotypes. This is Brazilian uh, soybeans. 
Some of them, total isoprobon is very low as compared to others. Uh, I will show you these things. Uh, you will find it later. Dave Jin, you have to remember the name of Dave Jin and Dave Jin. The total, if you add it up, uh, compared with the 105 AP, uh, this one. 33 has a higher amount of Dave Jin. This is the best, uh, in, in terms of soybean, uh, best uh, candidate for the next stage. Instead, uh, in Korea, uh, most soybeans imported from China or Brazil or America, uh, we started with a different uh, noble source. So Pore Japonica, yeah, this tree, this is big tree like these things. Uh, it has a um, lot of ripe seed. We can harvest a lot of seeds. So also this seed contains genistein, a uh, large quantity. So we use the last one, enzyme hydrolysis of glycosidic bond. So this is a, a large schematic diagram of in the plant. Uh, this company now is Novarex company in Korea, large health food company. They were very ambitious these things, but actually I didn't recommend these things because the uh, cost is too high. Anyway, so they make a agricons from the glycoside isoprobon. So they named it Rex Flavon. As you can uh, see here, we, if you compare with the soy isoflavon, genistein content of Rex Flavon is 90 or almost 5%. Soy isoflavon, 15%. Uh, considerably different uh, uh, ratio. Uh, the first uh, uh, clinical study uh, or animal study we focused on is the osteoporosis. Uh, as we go, especially for women, as it uh, goes older, uh, they lose uh, bone density. So this is very serious health problem, uh, mostly uh, because of uh, estrogen, deficient estrogen, uh, vitamin D consumption or calcium consumption is very low. You will uh, solubilize your minerals in the bone then uh, you will have a big holes in your bones. We call it osteoporosis. If you use azoflavone, we are assumed this phytoestrogen, uh, plant origin estrogen, can uh, leave us or at least can prevent uh, from losing uh, calcium from the bone. So uh, we checked with the insulin like growth spectra number one, IGF, and the transforming growth spectra, beta. All these two factors involved with the solubilizing calcium, uh, I mean, actually uh, inhibit, stop solubilizing calcium from the bone. Uh, in this case, RP is product, as, uh, in this case, transforming TGF uh, beta. Uh, shows a very good result. Anyway, another thing is, uh, this is skeleton of mouse. Skeleton of mouse, uh, maybe you don't know the, the name of uh, uh, each part of the bones. Uh, this is a tibia. Tibia means this, this part uh, very easily uh, breaks down when some uh, impact is made, if you have uh, osteoporosis. So in the animal experiment, they use these things and then lumbar area also they use. Okay, this is control ones. This is uh, actually defective ones we say, you can see big holes here. And if the treating estradiol, uh, this is a, a female hormone, uh, you can see uh, the improvement here. 
Then this RGRARP is Rex problem, glycoside or aflicum type or a different formulation product type RP. The RP uh, actually uh, recovers all these density uh, very well. Uh, as compared to this is soybean, soybean also improves, but improvement is uh, uh, far less than RP. Okay, the same experiment. Okay, uh, I will suggest uh, researchers about these things. Uh, even in Thailand or Southeast Asian country, there's a even known uh, plant which has a high content of uh, isoflavones. Uh, maybe you have to find is it contain high daisyin or daisyin? I will tell you why. Uh, when I uh, I talked about this daisyin is important in Brazilian soybean. Because they gene can be converted to through this metabolic pathway turn into equal. The equal also has an estrogenic power, but this power is uh, uh, depending upon paper, it varies, but more than 10 times to 100 times higher than they gene or genistein. Some some people can uh, claim to more than 500 times, but I cannot trust that one anyway. Uh, very high. So even though uh, you are you have a small number of or concentration of date gene, you can convert in, in equal. If you can have a 100 more power, well, it should be okay. So this is a way we should pursue. Because only about 30 to 50 percent of people have uh, intestinal bacteria that makes equal. I had uh, uh, some two sample from Thai woman when I had an experiment. Thai woman has a let's say uh, the intestinal microflora uh, as compared to Korean counterpart uh, is very poor. Uh, the we call it good bacteria, intestinal bacteria content is very, very low because of uh, your uh, diet, I think. Your diet didn't contain uh, very much lactobacillus uh, species or others that can stick to the cell walls in large uh, intestine long time. Like a yogurt, if you consume yogurt, Lactobacillus bulgaricus type, it stays in the stomach uh, less than 18 hours. But Lactobacillus plantrum stays uh, more than uh, four days or seven days. That the experiment uh, data not published, but uh, we can uh, confirm that one. So maybe uh, another thing is if business wise, maybe. You can make a, uh, how would I say, a lactic acid formulation with uh, this kind of uh, bacteria. You isolate uh, bacteria that can convert a day gene into equal, then maybe you can have a fortune, I hope. Okay, this is uh, uh, all I've got uh, for isoflavon from the noble sources. And uh, I will stop here. And if you have uh, any questions or so ever, uh, before moving on to suspecting, because uh, our memory span is very short, I will uh, happily answer to your question, if you have. Usually, uh, Thai people is very shy. Uh, if you really, Shy, maybe you can write email to me. Uh, later, I will give you my email uh, on, on, on the screen. Uh, if not, maybe we can share some information together. 
I, Ajam Prapang. <laughs> nice Good to see you. Good afternoon, Professor Hong. Because I am Thai, I also Chai too. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, very nice start up with your presentation and very interesting topic. And um, seem to me uh, the the form of the uh, isoflavone like a glycosides or a glycone is affect the, the estrogenic activity mm -hmm. of the compound. So uh, I am wondering that uh, the, the, the sugar moiety of the glycosides isoflavone, this is very stable. For example, this is uh, still stable under the, the cooking condition or even in, uh, in human digestive system, it can remove by the heat or, or the, the uh, digestion of in, in the GI tract or not? Ah, okay, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking me that question. Uh, the link, the bond strength of glycosidic bond is very strong. It's like uh, uh, you cook rice, mm -hmm. the starch, you cannot break it down by cooking because of that uh, alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond is very, very strong. It's, a, it's not like a, a hydrogen bond. It's a three, only three kilocalories. So it's easily break down, but glycosidic bond is a very strong uh bone but if you chew it and then you can, um, intake it in the, your stomach stomach acid comes out it will die it will break down partly that first step mm -hmm. and then maybe if we if it moves uh, on to large intestine there's a uh, intestinal microflora certain Microorganism can produce beta glucanase. So it can break down there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I emphasize on good microflora in your gut. Mm -hmm. it, it comes from your diet. Or maybe you can buy health food or whatever. Mm -hmm. But natural diet, like a kimchi, I would say, has a very good lactobacillus plantarum which has a uh, very strong uh, beta-glucanase also. Maybe I will show you later with the uh, uh, Dr. Shripon Libroy publish also with the Tuanau. Uh, the pronunciation is made different. As mm -hmm. It's a uh, bacillus fermented soybean product. Uh, that kind of uh, bacteria if you can grow and then if you can consume with the spores together, maybe in large intestine, it can break down the glycosidic bond and absorb, absorption rate is, will be increased naturally. So it all comes into your food, actually. Your food is very important. So, well, your faculty, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, okay. that's what it is. Thank you so much. And can I have one more question? Okay. Okay. Uh, normally, the, the, if we talk about any other phytochemicals, mm -hmm. it, work, it would work the same way or not that the glycoside form is normally is not active compared to the, the acaicone form, or it, de it, it really depends on the, the type of the phytochemicals? Oh, well, I'm not going through all the phytochemicals, but uh, it's like a gin, uh, ginseng mm -hmm. also has a glycoside part. Mm -hmm. If you break down that one, it's more mm -hmm. active. So that's why I'm showing you pepsin organ and pepsin types. Mm -hmm. uh, the who I don't know who create these things, but this all these things designed when you need the sleep, you have to sleep. 
When you need it, you have to be active. Now, this is uh, maybe iso problem also act as uh, some a biological function in the soybean. So mostly they don't need that function. Also, they have a beta gluconate small amount, and they need it. They will produce beta gluconate anyway. So maybe this is pretty much as a human body. But mostly, if you have a large size, I will tell you later, large size molecules, it cannot be absorbed through uh, how that would I say, belly of uh, your intestine, not easy. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you have to, it's better to cut it down. Mm. So nature designed that way with the intestinal microflora with the, also in that the stomach acid, it break down so you can use it. That's my mm. assumption. <laughs> okay, thank you, <laughs> Professor. Okay, so we have two questions in the chat box uh -huh. to asking. So, um, they are asking that, is there any recommendations for equal consumption for women? So this one, and another one is, what should happen if we overconsume the soybean-based products? Mm -hmm. okay. So there has two questions from mm -hmm. Sylvia's. <laughs> Always, uh, we are working with the biological active compound toxicity. Always matters. The toxicity always comes from purified compound because the concentration of isoflavone in the food is a very really small amount. Also, the how much you can consume a day. Like uh, if you can consume one kilo of soybeans a day, maybe I will think about it. But before that one, you will have a stomach ache, right? And uh, that's, that's not the uh, one. The, the recommendation for equal consumption for women, uh, equal has two types, synthetic and natural. Synthetic one has uh, different stereoisomers. So I wouldn't recommend that things. Maybe a different isomers sometimes has a different mode of action. So you have to control the dose very strictly. But uh, our way in from the food, we don't have equal in the food. We can convert it, convert it from the large intestine. Where in the in the test tube we can produce ego in the lab. Mm. But the amount is so small. So if I check the cost, uh, people will not buy it anyway. Mm -hmm. It's better with the data gene concentration, it's high uh, food, you consume it with a let's say with a good bacteria probiotic bacteria, they can convert that one they gene to equal. Mm. That's what I recommend. Then the amount of uh, concentration equal mm. is very small, but effective. So that natural do it. Okay, <laughs> we, we just control a little bit of nature. Okay, right. Yeah. So we have the uh, ones, another question, so very famous, <laughs> mm -hmm. popular. If we are fermented soybean products, uh, mm -hmm. can we get more agai corn part or not? Uh, I talked about that one uh, previously uh, with uh, Dr. Propan. Uh, cooking cannot break down glycosidic bond. Mm. Glycosidic bond is the electron sharing, mm -hmm. the strength is very, very high. So mm -hmm. you cannot, like 100 degree, if you cook, maybe it's almost 97 or 98 degrees Celsius. With that power, well, <laughs> not gonna be easy. If glycosidic bond break down, your rice become water. Mm. Yeah glucose solution, right? Mm -hmm. If you cook it. So you cannot do it. Without help of uh, enzyme, you cannot do it. 
Uh huh. Okay. So, okay. If they're they're asking for the fermented soybean products, mm -hmm. that's oh, oh sorry. Uh, fermented soybean product we can get more agricultural depending upon bacterial types. Mm. But usually, uh, if you ferment it, you have a more agricultural. I'm sorry about that one. I forgot. I misunderstood the question. <laughs> <laughs> we can get more, but not enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, from the Amazon Panjali. Um, as I'm asking that, mm -hmm. is, is the heart any other microorganism that has potential mm -hmm. to be converted the mm -hmm. eco compounds than Lactobacillus pentarum, professors? Uh, bacteria, bacillus species. Yeah. Bacillus species always inside our large intestine because uh, it uh, forms spores. So whenever we eat it, it can survive through stomach acid and then reach travel through the large intestine and they have a happy hours there because they are, how would I say, uh, they can grow there without minimal amount of oxygen. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah, they have uh, another strain, then lactobacillus, I think like mm -hmm. a, Petty or or some another species. Well, you can find it from the food, <laughs> fermented food. Number one thing <laughs> is find it from the fermented food. Mm -hmm. Easy one. So, I uh, usually I collect many different kinds of fermented from the local market, and then mm -hmm. try to find the uh, bioactivity from there. So mm -hmm. we screen that one and then select. Uh, those species. That's mm -hmm. the way. Uh, most of my microorganisms registered in Korean uh, culture collections found that way. Okay. It's mm -hmm. very time consuming. But without, with the help of my beloved students, <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. Maybe uh, 10,000 species at one okay. time. <laughs> <laughs> So I think this first section is already asked the many questions. So can, can we move to another next one? Okay. I think. And if you have a question, maybe you can leave on the chat box and we will be back after okay. second sections. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. uh, Suffecting so production from non-sorted soybean fermentation. Non-salted means uh, most uh, soybean fermentation uses uh, salt, but it doesn't use salt at all. And uh, we refine the quality control parameters. Uh, this is a traditional Korean way. I joke about this thing. This is Jangdo, traditional batch type bioreactor. Whenever uh, uh, people from the United States or Europe comes to me, I introduce this thing. I will show you bioreactor. They expect lots of things. And I, I usually show them these things. But this is really a create a miracle. And uh, this is a Korean traditional fermented food with the using low soybeans. We cook, cook it and ferment two to three days with the bachelor's subtilis. We call it Cheonggukjang. Uh, is a, a counterpart of uh, Japanese natto. Well, we make a block called the meju, and then 22, 90, almost three months, we hang it around the outside and it collect uh, different kinds of uh, uh, mold species that uh, produce uh, protease enzymes. And then uh, there's two types with the uh, salt brines, we put it over here inside and then leave it there, depending upon uh, your taste, maybe uh, six months or many years, you can uh, store it that way. So all the part we call it denjang is pretty much similar to Japanese miso. And then uh, liquid part is soy sauce. 
And also, uh, you add rice powder, salt, and chili. And then you just store it outside and it becomes a chu jang. Uh, I'm working on uh, Cheongguk jang. Uh, okay, uh, there's one review papers about the alkaline fermented food. So let's see, this is Cheongguk jang and natto. Uh, this kinema is uh, from Nepal, pretty much same thing. So, Denjang uh, is Korean. Uh, Dauchi is the Chinese ones. Uh, Dawa Dawa is a locust longbin uh, uh, from Africa. Uh, anybody pronounce these things? Achan Warachon? Ituana? Uh, which one? This one. Tuana. Tuana. Oh, okay, Tuana. Oh, oh no, no, it's, it's typing in Thai Tuana. Actually, that's called Tuana. Tuana. Uh, something missing here. Yeah, this one is not correct typing. Oh. Yes, but the pronoun is kind of the same. Mm. Okay, okay. This is from the one paper. Maybe uh. That he's that not the, uh, what is it? Uh, Thai people. <laughs> okay. You have to ask Ajahn Prabhan more than me. He is good in speaking more. Okay. In, uh, it's pretty much same. And uh, this is dried ones, Tua Nao. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Tua Nao. Uh, mm. I bought it from the Chiang Mai. Oh. Mm. Long time ago. Uh, I published one paper with the Benya Manochai of Kasesa University. At that time, he, he worked with me in Utratech Bangkok. Uh, first uh, fermented soy food paper, a uh, Thai soy food paper in Korea. Uh, we check all, all, all the nutritional quality and we found uh, it had a dyed gene uh, content, the dry ones, 355 to 60, uh, 176, depending upon where we bought. Uh, the very interesting paper I made. And then uh, Dr. Shripon uh, worked on Tuanao with the nutritional quality made with the reaction. And then beta glucosidase. Uh, I, I wonder maybe Dr. Shripon is using this thing to produce equal, I hope. Uh, I will explain why uh, I start looking into surfactant. When I start surfactant more than 22 years ago, nobody, uh, maybe said, nobody's interested in surfactant at all. Uh, but our faculty has a, a big project uh, with the Korean traditional fermented food and uh, this, uh, Dr. Song asked me uh, antibacterial activity of uh, fibrinolytic uh, enzyme from Cheongguk Chang. That's a pretty much like a natto kinase. I uh, checked with it, it shows some antioxidant activity depending upon uh, trends. And then I wondered uh, the molecular size is more than 1,000 Dalton. Can it be absorbed through a digestive tract? That was my question. Because most of the uh, experiment is done in vitro. So I checked several papers. Uh, they claim natokinase is kind of a serine protease with a strong thrombi thrombolytic activity, which means a blood clot solubilizing activity. Uh, it was extracted from fermented beans such as natto, dauchi, and tempeh. And uh, for the scientific paper, this is a very strange expression. 1995, uh, this song is not me. Don't get me wrong. Can be absorbed through the intestine. What is this expression? Be absorbed or not? Which means I don't know. Uh, if you write any paper at all, 
you should not use this kind of expression. Can be absorbed, uh, which means uh, there is no supporting their part. And then uh, at that time, I decided if it's more than 1,000 Dalton, it's not going to be very easy to be absorbed. That was uh, my hypothesis. And then uh, one researchers eventually to 2017 uh, support my hypothesis. He said uh, from Uppsala, Sweden, he said, skip drop open membrane permeability at molecular weight above 1,000 Dalton, which means it goes over, molecular size goes over 1,000. Uh, it cannot permeate membrane very well. So lot of kinase is uh, more than uh, 10,000 to 30,000 or something like that. I am very much wondering their preparation of uh, their sample. Anyway, so at that time I decided to find a small molecular size active compound and we did uh, separate these things and uh, uh, did many things about uh, compound the uh, structure and I find out from the petroleum company paper, it is so effective, so funny, not food company. Uh, this one's uh, uh, surfactant isomers, uh, talking about 2010. Uh, when I studied these things, only five isomers uh, uh, published in the paper, now it's almost nine isomers published. The amino acid uh, with a hydrogen, uh, carbo uh, carbon bond uh, looks like this. This is a synthetic detergent, B and C. This is surfactant. It's like a soap. So uh, this one's like a cleaning our dirty clothes. This soap, I assume, cleans our blood stream, I mean, those blood clot formation, they prevent or solubilize. Uh, because I was interested in biological activity uh, regarding uh, thrombosis, atherosclerosis. So I focused on plated aggregation and blood coagulation of these things. I met with uh, one expert, uh, Dr. Professor Hajimbak in Indian University, and I gave my sample and he did uh, some research on this. This is a blood clot formation uh, from botulinic vascular event. You can see this is serious process. So how they measure in vitro? Uh, on this thing, blood co coagulation inhibition. Uh, they have uh, this special uh, agrogeometric machines, and they measure these things with the right times of uh, plated rich plasma. Uh, this thing first, sorry. If it has a plasma a plated rich, it cannot pass many uh, rights. So detector comes like uh, this plate. Part, but a uh, plate rate uh, coagulate and it, it because it contains uh, some liquid part it uh, goes up then uh, light pass through better so well uh, this graph shows that way a uh, higher transmission rate it's like this if you have a, a plate rich distance your uh, transmission is very low but it coagulates, that's going to be a very high. So with this uh, uh, instrument, uh, I, the BF is uh, my uh, surfactant. I'll give that uh, <coughs> Dr. Hajimbab. And if the agro, uh, aggravate with the collagen, it coagulates. Then as a, as a they use uh, surfactant 1.0 microgram. Uh, 
number one is around 30%, uh, 50%, uh, and then 7.3, uh, uh, then it goes almost uh, zero. Uh, this way uh, improves uh, an inhibit aggregation very well. Let's say as concentration of surfactant BF increases, blood coagulation inhibited significantly. And then uh, another thing is uh, theophylline or well, monostomine uh, is uh, actually aggregation inhibitor drugs. Uh, we compare these things with uh, surfactin. Uh, surfactin shows a uh, higher uh, inhibition rate, like 90%. Uh, theophylline only 31, monostomine only 7%. But if you combine these things individually with the uh, surfactant, the inhibition rate uh, goes up, uh, like in case of uh, most of them, 96%. OK, this is a, a premature experiment, but uh, the screening test, preliminary test of a survival rate of uh, ICR mouse by intrapenitoneal injection of a sarcoma cell 180. Uh, sarcoma cell 180 is uh, actually, you can transport plant to his tumor uh, to mouse, so it can cause cancer. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it's BF is surfactant and Texor is chemotherapy medication. Uh, from the tree. Uh, this is very famous uh, chemotherapy medication. And uh, survival after cancer is uh, erupted, 30 days, uh, all mouse is dead. If you use a Texo, 40% survive. Use a uh, Sobectin, and 80% survive, maybe. This is only one time experiment. We cannot uh, claim this is really effective with the uh, other experiment followed with the uh, other researchers. They confirm anti-cancer activity uh, in different type of cancer. So at that time we made the large scale uh, production plan. So we made a pro chart uh, soaking, sterilization, cooling, inoculation, fermentation, extraction, and so on. And uh, low purity, just the uh, freeze drying after filtration. And acidification, uh, so to partly purify, so which has a high purity. A uh, two, two way uh, design was made. Uh, after that, uh, we need uh, some for the large scale. We need uh, some uh, quality index when to start uh, fermenting. So I asked uh, one student uh, to all this uh, dirty work. Uh, this is the work of uh, Mr. Chi Chang Dun, master student of Indian University now. Uh, I, I like him very much. He worked really diligently. Now, starting from measuring soybeans and uh, so for 12 hours. And then autoclave uh, 15 minutes two times. As you can see here, this part. Raw material usually contains the six, 10 to the 6 of a bacterial count. And for the 15 minutes, because it contains spores, uh, 10 to the, uh, the 100 till 2 uh, survived. So, second. Uh, Autoclave, we remove all the bacteria from the soybean. Uh, after two times cooking, uh, autoclave, he, he is showing how soft it is. Maybe he is very strong. And then uh, we add the starter. <coughs> starter. This starter is the Bacillus subtilis KCCM10480. Uh, registered under my name as a patent registration. Uh, it cooked in the fermenter, a house, household fermenter at 40 degrees Celsius. 
after fermentation, two days, uh, oh, maybe two, two more days, something like that. And then they remove the uh, Jungkook jang, and you can see this slime part. And then uh, extract with the water and filter. After that, add acidification down to pH 2.5. You can see the bottom the precipitation after centrifugation. Oh, with the 300 gram soybeans, we get this much uh, purified uh, surfactant. So, then um, designed uh, some uh, machines how to comment uh, a solid fermentation diagram. Uh, this one's uh, actually. More, made more sophisticated, and uh, you know, one company already built up these things. Now, this is a uh, uh, master student Fifi. Well, determination of quality index of suspecting production. Now, this is a different engineering part, actually. So, uh, first, you have to look at these things as the fermentation goes on. Uh, surfactant production has uh, two different slopes. And they did, these two different slopes has a crossing point. And so this six hours fermentation. So what I'm trying to do, uh, what, what Changun trying to do is find the uh, other uh, quality index which shows this index clearly. Uh, this is a gross curve. Bacillus subtilis in, in the uh, Jungkook Jang, uh, uh, non salty soybean fermentation. Uh, this shows uh, two different slopes, but the time crossing point is 24, so we cannot use it. Apart from that one, uh, counting uh, bacterial cells it takes uh, more than 36 hours, so this, we cannot use it for quality control index. pH, it keep uh, gradually, steadily increasing. So only one uh, slope. So we cannot use this. Uh, this is the color difference uh, value uh, using Minolta chroma meta. Uh, because of uh, the color value varies very much. So uh, anyway, we can have a two different slope lines and the 36 hours crossing point. And then uh, bricks meta, because we have uh, these days uh, digital type uh, bricks meta, and it's easier to read uh, less than 1.0 anyway. So it also has uh, uh, two types of uh, slopes and the crossing point is 36 hours. Uh, the 280 observance, because uh, uh, the surfactant has a uh, peptide bond, C-O-N-H, 280 nanometer, it absorbs light. Uh, the funny thing is it has uh, three slopes, but uh, after 24 hours, the slope actually uh, as a crossing point of 36 hours, also it can be used. Surface tensions, uh, this is a uh, less than 24 hours crossing point. This is uh, unfortunately at this point, I decided I cannot use this. Uh, later we found that we can use it. So let's see. It's, uh, Fermentation time extended. Uh, the surface tensions stop here. Uh, this is a uh, mistake of uh, our part because surface tension cannot go down straight all the time. So it stops somewhere and then gives the same numbers. So what we did is this is a uh, 36 hours from the 
to six hours to 72 hours, the average substantial value is pretty much the same. And we diluted the sample 1%. Uh, it, if it's 1%, well, the number should dramatically increase. It should. But it gives me uh, this 40, around the 40. So which means we made uh, different approaches, maybe uh, with the CMC comparison, or let's say 40%. Uh, to reach 40%, how much we have to dilute. So we have to compare with SDS and other things. So this gentleman should do some more work. Uh, relation sugars uh, decreases as fermentation goes by. So we cannot use. Uh, this part, uh, Changun uh, gets some more lesson. Uh, he wanted to measure protein concentration. And I uh, measured with the BCA and blood fat, uh, blood fat assay. Blood fat assay is a very common method. Only problem is in 12 hours, it shows a very low concentration of uh, protein. All this uh, concentration is very low. So diligently, he check the original paper, and then uh, if surfactant present in the sample, blood port cannot work very well. So he changed it from blood port to BCA as, as a method, uh, but uh, protein concentrations uh, uh, increase up to 48 hours, so cannot be used for the quality index. So uh, the last part is a candidate for the quality index. Which one is better? Uh, this one, we Chandran really do with 1% solution or, or the other things to get much degree, I hope. Uh, it depends on uh, if you are uh, in the field, like a factory, what kind of equipment you have is very important. The cheapest one is bricks. Digital ones also very cheap. So if you can get bricks core, uh, bricks metal, uh, digital ones, I recommend this one uh, for quality index. Uh, but number is a very different, very small. You have to be very careful. Uh, Minolta chroma metal is somewhat expensive, but most food company has it. So maybe can use these things too, but need the uh, uh, Excel calculations for in this case. So one more step. Uh, also, most uh, for quality control purpose, most company has a UV visible spectrophotometer. So 280 nanometer. Uh, should be uh, uh, another option. So I recommend now uh, this three thing method for quality index uh, work. And then uh, the most accurate things should come out with a surface tension uh, curve. I, I'm gonna wait for these things. Okay. Any questions? Your question surely contribute to improving my hidden knowledge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the one questions in the chat box uh, mm -hmm. a while ago. So um, they're asking that if we ferment the soybean products, mm -hmm. uh, which yield shall be greater between uh, Glycoside or glycone, a glycone. Mm -hmm. Soybeans, ferment. Oh. Yes, in fermented soybean oh, yeah. products. Mm -hmm. I have to check the data. Mm. It depends, it depends, but uh, maybe pretty much the same glycone and glycoside, I think. Because uh, uh, depending upon uh, bacillus species, 
mm -hmm. fermenting bacillus species, if they produce uh, group beta gluconase a lot, mm -hmm. maybe um, more aglycone types will be present. But if not, maybe glucoside part should be more there. So I cannot answer directly because uh, it's, it depends on depends on your bacterial strains and then also condition spirals. So I am sorry. Uh, maybe if you write me email, I can uh, answer it later. <laughs> <laughs> let me let's see. Maybe I will. I have to show them my email address. Yeah, um, can leave yeah. in the chat box if someone yeah. would like to further yeah. question to Professor Hong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anytime I can talk to June, so don't worry. I have <laughs> plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. FTC, okay. Now, yeah. Oh, where is it? Okay. Slide <laughs> show. Okay. Okay. So you have the see the email for from Professor Hong already. So be wearing you got a lot of mail. <laughs> I don't so, think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I did that more than 10 times. I never get any email. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, okay. okay. <laughs> So they have the, some questions. So for the surfactant uh, that's from the fermented soybean, so mm -hmm. from the you analyze, so it's like uh, the basics of chemical analyzing. So if you would like to specific that is, uh, is surfactant or not, it used to be had a further analyze like a HPLC or another analyzing or not. Uh, we just the surfactant content we analyze through HPLC. Mm -hmm. The problem is uh, in the product I made has a five isomers. Mm -hmm. Also, standard has a five isomers from Sigma. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are going to encounter problem. How can I con calculate the concentration? Mm. Right, the five mm. isomers. Yeah. In that case, uh, we made the uh, LC assumption. The mm -hmm. response factor of each P mm -hmm. should be same. Mm. In that case, we add up the area, mm -hmm. standard area, and we add up our sample area. We can compare. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there is no way you can do these things. If you are looking into specific isomers, maybe you have to look into that P. But mm -hmm. problem is there is no standard for each isomer. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can change uh, check with the paper with absorption uh, coefficient of each okay. isomer. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that case, maybe you will calculate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyone has any questions? Okay, we have the one question about the surfactants. Mm -hmm. They're asking that except we fermented soybeans can mm -hmm. be fermented another raw materials for productions of surfactants. And is this can be applying in the what kind of food industry? Mm -hmm. Let me make it a little bit clearer. I got a little uh -huh. bit clearer. I produce surfactant. And then I take out surfactant and then left over the residue we can use. That, that is the point of question, right? Yeah, 
Yes. So extracting, I mean, wash out the surfactant, the slime part, uh, we are looking into a dietary protein uh, pr production because uh, uh, surfactant may be a very important part, but we analyze the uh, amino acid profile, it's still very good. So we can dry out and uh, make a powder or like a soy protein isolate. Uh, the proteins contain uh, much of leucine and uh, branched amino acid. This is uh, very good for the young generation with the uh, fitness. <laughs> Muscle builder. Maybe you can go that way. Or well, make, make, maybe with this one, you can make uh, energy bars with the other uh, formulation, including this. Achan Im is very good at that point, that way. So she can do it anything, I hope. <laughs> So we have like, uh, so just only that's two questions. So anyone's have any questions for these sections? So we have the two sections, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, yes. So anyone's had the questions too? Uh-huh. Uh, Ajahn Pantali asking that, uh, do we have extracts of the sample before going to analyze? So that's one. And if it's half, would you suggest how the attract to be get the high yield? Aha. That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, usually we extract it with the water, aqueous mm -hmm. leaching. That's the process called. Mm -hmm. uh, how much water you use to extract it is mm -hmm. always a question. Uh, Mr. G, extracted uh, the two fold of water, like a 300 gram soybean, he used 600 gram water. And I asked him why two fold, two times, if not five times, if not 10 times. So he did that work and give me the data. The recovery rate is pretty much same. So there is no point of using more water to concentrate it with the uh, acid. It is really painful using centrifugation. Think about it. You have a lot of water to centrifuge it. So you have to work on this thing. When you use uh, water, first check it with it, how much you can recover. Another thing is uh, I did it uh, with a different ethanol concentration because it's food, you cannot use other things. Only ethanol can be used because it's protein. So it will help a little bit. Uh, concentration goes higher, but because uh, acid pre precipitation is the best, uh, method for partially purifying, even using uh, ethanol concentration, I mean 50% ethanol or something, it will help, but uh, eventually result is same. So, so far water is best one. Yes. And what was the next question? Next uh, question. So uh, uh, why did you shoot water extractions over then the methanol or ethanol? Nah, you cannot use methanol for food purpose. Ethanol, I have used yes. already. <laughs> One of my students used uh, acetone and give a good result and gave it to me and I told him, can you eat it? <laughs> you cannot evaporate it completely. Okay. Yeah. How about the ethanol? Ethanol should ethanol. be okay. Okay, but as I told you, so after ethanol, anyway, you have to use acidification. Then mm -hmm. water acidification, ethanol acidification, the end result is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So you are using more money on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, so you got the answers. So the the last one I think says asking is about the applications. So, so like uh, in the market, is it possible to make a cocktail of bioactive compound from fermented soybeans, add dietary supplements, or special diet? What do you think? <laughs> must be a question from uh, Achan Shifun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's possible. Mm. It's possible because uh, uh, surfactants uh, maybe combined with the uh, isoproblem as uh, uh, one option uh, because uh, where the residue I extracted uh, surfactant, the residue contains isoflavon anyway. So again, yeah, so. If you can use this one together, maybe uh, for the menopausal woman, blood circulation is also problems. They have a very high LDL cholesterol levels, and then uh, blood uh, viscosity is very high. So pectin lowers blood viscosity tremendously well. So if it used with the eyes of problem, maybe. That's a good option. Uh, Dr. Shripan, if you starting with a new business, just call me. <laughs> I will bring my strain with, with me. <laughs> okay, she said, thank you very much for your answer. <laughs> So we have eight minutes left. I think we can be like a, another one's question. So if anyone's asking. Let's I think it's a part of you. <laughs> Let me ask the very simple questions uh, mm -hmm. to confirm that if our stu student can follow what is the surfactant, I'm not quite sure if Professor Hong already mentioned earlier or not. Uh, about the key application of surfactant okay. in, in food industry or, or something. So far, uh, no food industry use surfactant. So far. Because uh, the production yield still we suffer. And then the pure surfactant problem uh, price is very high. So the barrier we have to overcome is uh, large quantity production of surfactant. If it's just a food con which contains surfactant, we can anyway make a commercial product. But when consumer, they see the this kind of product, they expect too much. Oh, if I consume these things, maybe in one week, I become healthy. Health food cannot make you healthy. But, but maybe medication can be that way. So uh, one of my students actually doing a uh, liquid culture with a tripton soy uh, broth and adding another amino acid and minerals increases the uh, production of uh, surfactant uh, compared with the uh, solid fermentation, it's uh, over 20 times to 50 times higher yield which comes from uh, liquid culture. Only problem is uh, we did uh, some animal study with uh, that things. In high dose of uh, surfactant, and in, in case of mouse, uh, you have a blood uh, uh, rupture comes up, so your eyes become red. The mouse, I, I was surprised. So you have to control those in case of large uh, medication. But in case of food, well, you don't need to worry about up to, uh, what is it, 50, 50, 20 micromoles at one time. So well, we cannot get that much anyway. 300 gram soybeans, well, we have uh, less than one micromoles. <laughs> so if you want to 
go further, there's uh, many papers published, especially in China uh, with the liquid culture, but they still they cannot make it commercial, uh, cannot roll down the price. Uh, paper is paper. So it looks nice, but well, <laughs> somebody should do more work. Okay, so thank you very much, I think. Mm -hmm. Come over to you Korea. Korea, you don't need to worry about the COVID-19. Took a vaccine already? <laughs> Come to me. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> So when you had to go, Professor <laughs> Hong already invited. Ah, Hong Kitung Mangma Kana. You you should come to Thailand, Professor. Ah, uh, my wife never arrives. <laughs> okay, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Hope to see you in Bangkok. Mm. Next year. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I think so. Everyone got the many knowledge, right? From the from the Professor Hong's and uh, Grant, your experience a lot from fermented food and fermented soybeans and many active compound. And I hope everyone is gonna enjoy of the webinar today and I think it's very good in the uh, atmosphere that everyone can join us. So thank you everyone again and thank you Professor Hong so much to be sharing with us and as I can give your thumbs <laughs> and big hand to you too. So before we left, I would like to share the screen for the uh, certificate today mm -hmm. that you are uh, attendings of our webinar today. You can see on the screen and you can uh, download uh, the QR code and fill in the form, your names and your emails and our e-certificate will be sent direct to your emails for the today of the World Food Webinar Series on EP11. So I will take a short time and for the link. Mm -hmm. So after your scannings already, I would like to introduce our the next of the webinar. This is the last one of our webinar for this year. Uh, it will be uh, on the herbal tea from Yakun of the Professor Shin oh. Yasuda on next Fridays. If you still finish, uh, interesting and antioxidant effects. Uh, don't forget about to join us for the next week and uh, we will share the posters and the QR code on the down there. So if anyone don't uh, still not scanning of the QR codes, please on the screen. Mm -hmm. So I hope everyone is scanning already. So I would like to stop sharing now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to thank you, you again, Professor, to be be our guest today. And I mm -hmm. hope next year you're gonna be our guest again, right? Maybe traditional Korea food. Maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Very maybe, to maybe we can today. invite also Dr. Lee. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is Dr. Lee is here, right? Uh, he, he's gone because of a meeting. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. thank you everyone so much and see you next Friday. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hong Kong. <laughs>